Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christina and I'm with Atlantic Institute and we welcome you all today to uh, our cultural creations class on um, Hamza. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this conversation over to our um, facilitator, our leader, our facilitator, our artist. Um, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself and um, go ahead and let's we can get rolling. Okay. Ah, there we go. Yes. Uh, we have one more person to admit, which I just clicked. I just uh, okay. Hi, uh, my name is Ye Yahudit Steinberg, and I am going to facilitate this demonstration uh, and a little bit of learning about the Hamsa. It's really great to be here. And I'm excited to see so many people that don't know anything about a Hamsa. And so I'm going to get into my presentation um, very quickly, but I want to address the um, PDF. So I, what I want to do first before I really get into all the introductions and that sort of thing is I just want to show you what this, um, there we go. Um, and I think we'll bring it down like that. Okay, so I created this, um, it's, it's a little worksheet basically. So what, what I have here is this is the design that, this is where we're headed. And um, today, since um, we have a relatively short time together and these classes are usually um, two to two and a half hours long, I am going to, um, I'm showing you the finished product and I will work, I will demonstrate for you and then um, what I was told is that usually people come back and um, draw later. I also will have, if you're the type of person that wants the step-by-step -step and um, the full two hours, I do have a class, um, a workshop that's coming up. And those links are going to be put in the chat um, and um any, and, I, and I think there might be a correspondence as well so that you'll be able to get in touch and um, do that. So here's, here's the design that I created. And it, it just gives you a little bit of what you read with the supply list. Please ignore this Zoom link. I just didn't have the time um, with all the holidays and stuff. And I just saw it. Um, this Zoom link was to the class we had this summer, so it does not go anywhere. Um, but the important part of this download is the Hamsa template. And I'm working on a six inch square. So um, this Hamsa fits into that. So let me um, just um, start this. Okay. So my name is Yehudit Steinberg, and I um, am all, this is some of my artwork. I have a master's in uh, adult and community programming uh, from the great North Carolina State University. Um, and a, um, I'm also a CZT, and you might ask, what the heck is that? And that's called a certified Zentangle teacher. So these that you're looking at here are uh, Zentangle inspired art that I've created. Um, this, this is my website. Uh, I know my name is a little bit uh, unusual. I'll give you that two second, um, how to pronounce it. If you know the website, it's called uh, Yahoo. So it's Yahoo Deet. So the accents on the last syllable, Yahudit, and it's a Hebrew name, and it means a Jewish woman. And it also, Hebrew has more than one meaning. It also means the, uh, the bringer of the spiritual into the physical plane, which I kind of like that with my name. Uh, so I'm a seasoned 
interdisciplinary artist, educator, and designer specializing in enhancing creativity and focus through different expressive arts modalities, including but not limited to Zentangle inspired art. And my cultural arts programming is a commitment to foster creativity and cultural understanding. Today's Hamsa demonstration is one of the cross-cultural programs I offer. The I recently opened the Y Steinberg Art and Design Studio, and we're all about art, culture, and creativity. The vision of the studio is to build an inclusive community of artists and makers who want to explore artistic expression, creativity, promote mindfulness, and unite diverse cultures through shared artistic experiences. And our mission is, of my studio is to inspire personal growth and mindfulness through three core avenues, creative expression, meditative art practices, and cross-cultural dialogue. So today my intention for this a workshop is actually a demonstration and also to learn about the Hamsa. And we're going to learn about its symbolism. We're going to show different traditions, use it. We're, we're going to explore a little bit of what Hamsa means to you. Why are some Hamsa facing up and some facing down? And I'm going to do a demo on how to create the Hamsa design that you will have the template for. And um, you can personalize your design. So what to expect? We're going to do an introduction to Hamsa symbol, show Hamsa in different tradition, explain briefly the origin, and draw our own Hamsa protection amulet, and then the information on the upcoming workshop. We will define it. So the objectives I have is to define Hamsa and its cultural significance, appreciate cultural diversity through Hamsa interpretations, and encourage creativity by drawing a personalized Hamsa. So here you can see um, there's many different designs of the Hamsa. Here's one that's facing up one that's facing down you can see the um here you can see the eye and this is the idea of the protection uh, from um the evil eye hamsa defined the hamsa amulet also known as the hand of fatima or the hand of miriam is a symbol origin, originating from various cultures and religions. It is characterized by its unique hand shape and is believed to bring protection, blessings, and luck while warding off evil. The Hansa has gained global popularity and is celebrated for its cultural significance and diverse interpretations. So what the heck is an amulet? Well, an amulet is also known as a good luck charm, a charm often inscribed with a magic incantation or symbol to aid the wearer or protect against the evil. Hamsa symbolizes a folklore tradition believed to bring protection, blessings, and luck while we're warding off evil. How old is the Hamsa amulet? Ancient symbol with rich, diverse heritage. You can see the hand on, you know, on um, the wall of um, in, inscribed. Now my now I'm forgetting. The word, but uh, on caves. So it goes way back. One of the oldest symbols in history dating back thousands of years BC. 
It predates major religions. And scientists say the origin is Mesopotamia or Carthage used to repel the evil eye. What is the original meaning? In ancient Mesopotamia, a protective amulet associated with the goddess Ishtar, the hand shape, a symbol of feminine power and protection. In ancient Egypt, the Hamsa is associated with the goddess Isis, the hand of Isis. It's a symbol of magical protection and divine blessings. It spread throughout the Mideast and North Africa. As it spread to different regions and cultures, it became associated with different deities, legends, and religious beliefs. So let's look at a few traditions that typically um, you will see the Hamsa. So in Islam, it's called the hand of Fatima. It represents the five pillars of Islam, profession of faith, prayer, alms, fasting, and pilgrimage. In the Jewish tradition, the hand of Miriam. It's adopted first by Sephardic Jews. Those are Spanish Jews. And also the Kohan hands, um, the prayer of protection. I don't have a symbol of that here. That's the, if you can see my hand, the spreading and also used uh, in, in Jewish temple times, uh, the priests would give their blessings with, with the Kohan hands. Jacob also blessed children with his hands. And magical element grew out of the protection. It's also referenced in one um, in our book called the Talmud, which is... Um, rabbinical um um the the rabbis have uh, have different um talks on uh different topics in the torah the five books of moses and today in judaism it's actually a symbol of identity and a lot of people choose to wear the hamsa so in J in the jewish tradition a lot um, there is the face, there is the Hamsa facing down, but it isn't always facing down. So why are some Hamsa facing up and some facing down? The orientation of the Hamsa, whether facing upward or downward, can vary in different cultural and artistic representations. So there's not really one answer to this. But the direction of the Hamsa hand is believed to have different symbolic interpretations depending on the tradition and uh, context. So here are a couple explanations. Upward facing. An upward facing Hamsa is often associated with blessings, abundance, and positive energy. It is believed to invite good fortune, protection, and the receiving of blessings from a higher power. In this interpretation, the upward direction signifies an open hand ready to receive divine grace. I put this in here just for, you know, I had a little bit of a request. Another ritual item that is used in the Jewish tradition is called a mezuzah. And the mezuzah is put on the doorposts. In fact, we put them on all the doorposts in the house, except for the bathroom. So a mezuzah is a ritual object. Inside the mezuzah are the Ten Commandments. So um, they're placed on door frames in Jewish homes, and they contain the verse from the Torah, the first five books of Moses, 
and symbolizing God's presence and the importance of following commandments. On the other hand, a hamsa is a symbol of protection and good luck, widely used in Middle Eastern cultures, including Judaism, but it does not have the same religious ritual significance as a mezuzah. And I would say the mezuzah isn't necessarily religious, it's cultural, because I, a lot of cultural Jews, and I consider myself a cultural Jew, um, that um, you put the, the mezuzah on the door post. So did we talk about the dot is associated with negativity? Disorientation is thought to symbolize the dispelling of negative energies or deflecting harmful influences away from the individual or space where the hamsa is displayed. We have a very large hamsa that faces downward. And um, in our home, um, in uh, Cal uh, the San Francisco Bay Area before we moved to New Mexico, we had, we had this Hamsa over our door. Um, as, you went, as you came through the front door, there was a Hamsa facing downward to, for protection of our home. So let's take a look at some of the different cultures that do adopt uh, a hamsa. In Hinduism, it is the divine presence as soul residing in the heart. Five fingers symbolize chakra energy. And in Christianity, there's a loose link between hamsa hand and the Virgin Mary, represents strength, compassion, and the feminine. And the eye symbol is replaced by the fish. So these are a few more pictures of Hamsa. And it is also a unity symbol. And the fact that it has shown up in so many different cultures. The connection between numerous religions and cult cultures, it can be seen as a unification symbol predates any religion, therefore can be seen as a spiritual symbol, and it doesn't belong to any one specific. At its heart, it represents a symbol of reflection. So the unification symbol meaning bless. Blessings, not about getting good things, it's about aligning oneself with the great mystery, God, the divine. Protect, a shield to preserve from injury or harm. And thrive, prosper, flourish, be fortunate, and successful. Now, in, my, in, in, in what we're drawing, that is um, what um, I put on my, I chose to put on the Hamsa. So what does a Hamsa mean to you? And I'd like you to, you know, we have a, this is just a brief cursory introduction to this symbol. And I hope that it's explained a little bit. And now we're going to get into the drawing of it. But take a moment while, while we're getting, um, I get you over to the studio where we begin to draw and put in the chat, what does the Hamsa hand mean to you? Oh, and I forgot one because it has a lot to do in the uh, massage um, healing hands is, is a very uh, important part. And it, it's a symbol there as well in today's culture. So let's get started. And you can see here where I, I chose those three words that I'm going to put here, bless, protect, and thrive. What I'd like you to consider <laughs> in this drawing is that it's, it's really about you. 
and what it means to you if you're cr creating an amulet and it and you know um you're going to in, imbue your intention into your drawing so you do not need to put these three words these were words that i chose i have two questions for you that were in the chat before we start at the design part if i could ask so first was was why is the thumb and the pinky the same size and depicted like they are versus a typical human hand and then the second one was what did it mean to be a cultural jew ah. so i mean it might be oh, that's a long answer. <laughs> okay there is an answer about the about the hand and and i saw it and i forgot <laughs> but okay. there is but there is <laughs> I, I think it's the idea of an open hand, but I'm not exactly sure. So um, I'm sorry I can't um, answer that with authority. Um, you know, there. Um, the short answer of being Jewish is um, that my heritage is Jewish like a Navajo is an Indian. Uh, you know, a, Nav a Navajo may convert to Christianity still a Navajo. We're, you know, my lineage is Jewish. So it doesn't matter whether I um, follow the 613 commandments or not. Um, I am Jewish and I ha I follow my heritage and my traditions, but I'm not necessarily um, an, or, you know, would be considered an Orthodox Jewish person that follows the 600, you know, all the commandments. Gotcha. Yes. I, I've had conversations on culture versus like faith, like that sometimes we're a, a culture, like um, sometimes those can be collapsed as one and sometimes it's uncollapsing those like because you can be of that culture um I, so i've had conversations in the past <clears throat> of that kind of kind of thinking like that you can be of that culture but you can be of this practice right or yes yeah or or choose not to <laughs> right um, or choose not to be yes yeah yeah so um uh, okay, so let me head over to here we go the studio. Okay, so this was this is the hum, Hamsa the um, where we're headed and the um, hold on one second. I just want to get okay and so here here are the supplies that i'm going to use today um i have this is uh my drawing pencil pencil um then i i have a i have a statler uh this is a one point uh, a point one and a point three these these are fine um, tip uh, like the microns I have I also use micron but I the, these are what I grabbed today but you can see that it's it's a fine point nice very nice and and there's different sizes and I you know that we get into in in the intro uh, Zentangle <laughs> uh, but um, then then I have a a graphite that I use for shading. And um, this is a blending stump that's used um, with the shading. I do have a ruler. There's one little part that we're gonna measure and I have scissors. So um, I, what I wanna do is I think I wanna dive right in because we wanna move right along. So typically before I start any um, type of drawing, I like to get present. And so if everybody just wants to take a moment 
and just um, get comfortable in your chair, take a couple of deep breaths and become present. So I, I, ha I have the, um, the template of the Hamsa and I actually, I was using paper and then I actually, this is, um, this is a, like a Bristol, it, it's a little bit thicker that I traced it on um, to cut it out, but you know, it can, ha you, you can do it any way you want. I suggest you cut it out and then we're going to trace it. So I'm going to move some of this. And so I <clears throat> I did trace in, in pencil below, but I'm gonna come in and, and work on, on the pen and get it traced traced down there. Well, since I did, I'm gonna go over it in pen. And when you do this, you want to take your time and um, breathe. This this is really what um, makes uh, the Zen Tangle practice relaxing, helps you to focus. Now you'll notice I'm turning. I'm turning my paper so that my hand really stays in the same position so that it's comfortable and can um, do the best lines that it can. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. I will try to do as little as possible. Now you'll notice I'm also left-handed. Um, so, what I suggest and, I, and I've learned over the years is I don't really watch the artist's hand. I watch the line that they're drawing. So, but you wanna outline your Hamsa. And you see these, um, these parts, these lines right here, this is going to define the fingers. So I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit right now. And I'm bringing it up just a little bit above that thumb. And the other thing is, is this is not perfect. Um, our art is, it comes from us and we, um, you know, there, we say in Zentangle, there are no mistakes in Zentangle. So relax and, and let this happen. Now, the next thing that we do um, is we just come around and I think it's about an eighth of an inch or so that I'm just gonna go around and I'm going to create what we call, it's a parallel line, but in Zentangle, we call it an aura. And so I'm gonna bring this up on this side. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm going to bring this up on this side. And then I'm going to take this. I enjoy seeing how you move the paper because I think I always drew the line, but then you smudge stuff as well. 
Exactly. So it's, it's nice to see that you move the paper all around and it keeps your hand from going over anything wet. It, it does. And it also keeps it steady where, where, yes. where if you try to, you know. Right. It. Yeah. If you're trying all different angles, your hand tires out quickly and it, it makes it, you're, you're doing angles you're not used to. And that was one of my one of my students said that was the first thing she learned from me was like uh, honestly it might be for me as well. Um it was like, oh, I've been doing this and I've been I hadn't been turning the paper. That might be where I suffer at is not turning it. And yeah. Because I think that looks significantly better than I could even do right there. There you go. <laughs> okay, now we're done. <laughs> Now, um, so now what I want to do, now that I have that outlined, so I want to work on this, um, this uh, cir uh, circle with flowers and um, I created a triangle and, a, um, and an eye. So this this takes this is like back to your pencil and what i did first was i measured across and of course it's a totally different measurement isn't that wonderful <laughs> okay but it's approximately three inches there we go. Because I was looking at, at the at what I did on the inside. All right. So I went to about <laughs> halfway in and I put a I put a dot. So Misty is asking, do we use pencil and to trace an outline? Yes. Yes, right. Because then I saw you use pencil and then you kind of went over it, I think, in pen and then erased the pencil line. Right. Right. That's yeah. That that's what I suggest. And then I'm coming down, I came down two inches. See what happens. And I come down like this, as in pencil and I went across here. Now, I'm sure that there is a way you could make a circle here where you could just kind of, like I said, it's not perfect. You could come along and put in your circle there. Um, I want to leave a little more at the top here, or if I made it like that, then I would do my aura on the inside. But I also have a one and a half inch. Um, I love these. <laughs> oh, nice. These are, you can get them on Amazon and they come really in handy. So I'm looking for the one that says one and a half, which is right here. And I'm going to place it over and have to, uh, let's see. All right. Get the mic out of the way. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up on those lines. Perfect. And, and just, um, this is a one and a half. Yes. Oh, I just went around. So if you have a cup or something, you know, be creative. You you have your your circle. I think that's the the most uh, difficult part of this is getting the circle. So what's very interesting as well is that once I have the circle, I have this line. I decided that, and, and we have the sign here, I decided that I was going to make a triangle. Mm 
later, now that I'm studying sacred geometry, it's like it 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 I didn't realize that um this this is part of it um when I did it, but I just did it, made that design intuitively. Any which which is an, a whole other uh conversation about drawing. from your um okay virginia was asking do you have a template to trace to i have a template to trace the hand right and then you had the circle but the the triangle you did into uh, that's a one and a half inch right diameter circle right so um if you have a compass and you want to create one, right? Um, or yeah, measure you, had, you had the circular temple template, but I was going to say, Virginia, if you don't have that, if you have a compass, you, you can, can you know, you can use a compass. Um, you can use a. Um, I haven't measured the bottom. Well, you can't see it. The bottom of my coffee cup. There could be uh, something sitting right in, around you, like a uh, small mason jar or something like that, yeah, or or you know a large pill jar or something. But um, or if you draw these lines, you just kind of arch your way, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So, um, all right. So now what I did was I drew the triangle. And now that I like it, I'm going to go over it in pen. And then, and, and, you know, <clears throat> each of yours will be a little, will be a little different and can be a little different. If you want to put something else in the middle of this triangle, if you don't want to put the eye, I mean, you can put the eye, you could put a symbol of a fish if you want to make it uh, more to the Christian on uh, tradition um and then um basically what i'm doing here is i'm just drawing some little circles and then i'm going around the inside of it which we call an aura and then I made one in the middle, which would be like the pupil. So that's the um, the inside of that. A any questions so far? We good? Hold on one second. Let me just read down here. Um, this is the template online. All right. So, um, yeah, Colette said she was doing a rough drawing right now because she um, didn't have a printer at home and the templates just came beforehand. And then um, Catherine said, I'm just doing all of the drawing by hand without the templates. I'm okay that it's not perfect. I like the whimsical aspect of it drawing it this way. <clears throat> so that's your that's feedback. Yeah, and so when I was, um, when I was, um, from what I understood, you know, I was going to demonstrate this and you were going to do it later. Um, so if you, you're you welcome to work along with me and doing it freehand is totally cool. And then you get, you know, if you can't, um, if you can um, 
if you can, if you do have a printer and you can download the template afterwards and you draw along with me and you want to do it again, that's really good because it's all about practice. And I'm going to just tell you, it's quite stress relieving just to watch you draw. It's, <laughs> it's stress enjoyable. It's stress relieving. Oh. Quite, it's quite peaceful to just watch you draw. You know, I think that's why um, they're they're so popular on TikTok. Uh huh. Because just uh, there are people that just watch you draw. Yeah. And so and, and so the idea is to be. So I just created the flower. These are little petals. You don't have to you don't have to do the same thing I do, but you are welcome. But I'm also, you know, looking at um okay. So now what I want to do is I want to come back. I'm gonna get back into my stencil for a second. Um because I want to, oops, I want to keep you on the camera too. So let me see. How do we, here we go. Okay. Okay, and am I right? Like each one is uniquely created, like... Or pull 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 that pull that other one down for a second. I'm like, does it look like that one? I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> okay. Like each one is it uniquely created, or they have to have similar aspects to them to be. Uh, well, I would say that yeah. if we're, if we're looking at the evil eye, right. But uh, there are Hamsa. I have seen so many different ways that this area is done even without the eye and mm -hmm. what I showed in the um what I mentioned in the description of Hamsa which was very brief um it was that in the Christian tradition this is replaced with a fish with fish right I was going to say so I mean it doesn't necessarily have to have and here's one I did with a fish right which the fish could be right there right yeah or you could you know you could decide well i don't want all that flowery stuff you know i just want an eye <laughs> mm -hmm. right yeah i mean that's that that's what makes it oh i tried there's another iteration here <laughs> oh yeah and you know, I, I I did, I like to put the eye, it, it's kind of a trademark of mine, even in other designs where the eye shows up. <laughs> right. So, um, but it's some, a lot of times it shows up, not necessarily with my intention to put it there. <laughs> it ends up in the artwork and then I just um, enhance it. So, so I, what I want to do with this now is I want to come and I'm going to do what we call an aura around it. And you, you can do this. I'm going to do it freehand, but if you had, you know, if, if you had all those circles and my freehand is, you know, it's going to be a little wavy. And that's okay. And this design has in it, built in it, what we call Zen flow, which means, and I'm gonna show you in just a moment what this means. So it means that you're gonna do a repetitive pattern. So you see all these um, these orbs or circles? We call them orbs because circles 
bring up the idea of being exact. We're not trying to be a computer. This, we're not trying to gotcha. draw digitally with our hand. What, what we're really doing is having a communication between our brain, our hand, and our eyes. So, so what, so what I'm going to do all the way around is to make these little orbs. And when you do this, it's a very different activity, activity than when, um, when we laid this out. That might have been, you might have been a little stressed, like, oh, I don't have the template. Oh, it's not perfect. You know, those kinds of things and might have felt uncomfortable, worried, I'm not good enough, you know, set all that aside. But when you do this, you don't have to think about anything. I have, I have parallel lines right here. And all I'm doing is I'm doing one line at a time, one, one orb at a time. And I go all the way around, which I'm not going to do at the moment because I want to um, move on a little bit in the design. And so let me come in. And now what I want to do is I'm going to look at these little thumbs. So I'm going to just put an arch from one side of the thumb to the other. And it doesn't have to be exactly where I put it. And I'm going to then make an aura again on the inside. Keep it on the inside here. And then we're going to take a look at a petal. So how are we going to do a petal? A petal is pretty much, there's a petal. One petal. Here's another one. And then this one, I'm going to make this petal come here. And I can give it a line. And then what I did for these is I did slightly curved. And then I, I didn't want it all black. I wanted it to have kind of a, what did, oh, I ended up coloring it. So I like using color and these, um, and the ink lines. And the thing about the ink lines is that um, I use, Permanent ink. These are also archival, both Statler and Micron. They're archival, so they they will last. Um, here we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my um. They're slightly curved. And the idea, uh, again, curved. The idea is, I'm thinking of my thumb. As I'm drawing this, I'm drawing, I'm thinking of three dimensions. And that's how you can get, start to get some depth. Questions? Oh, 
<clears throat> do we still have a, can I still do a few more minutes? I see it's one, but let me put, um, let me put, I have a flower here that I want to put again. And so what I did was I came and I put a petal. And this actually here, I came inside. And the reason that I made this red is that I see it as a flame here and actually going up, spirit going up and down. And then two, three, and then on to this side. two, three. And what these little petals can have is just a, a line with three, a couple of dots to give it a little shape. And so, as you can see, we finish, we did do a row of the um, orbs. And then I'm gonna show you how I did this. It's very simple with just a C curve. So I went all the way around so I'm left-handed, so I kind of have to start my way here. I guess I'm going that way. Um, but it's just it's just a C. It's like a little scallop. And then you can put a little dot in the center. And so that can go um all the way around where i didn't and like so Oop. now so finishing those and then um the next um the next thing is to write in your words so i suggest pencil and um, obviously this is going to take, a, this takes a little time to get it lined up, but well, see, I didn't line it up quite. That's why I do pencil for laying out the words. And I like that you did the first letter and then the last letter, right? To kind of give yourself the this amount of space you knew you would need. Right, and I'm still a little bit... Um, it's like the bead should move down or something. Yeah, exactly. Right. But because it's in pencil... Right. We, we you know, we're working. B and then you can figure out how to make your E. Nice. And then, um, yeah, and so then I put protect and that has I, I can put the R and the C we'll see I might get myself the O the T well Not too bad on the first try. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. So here's the Thrive. That would be something that would be hard for me too to figure out where I was making my, how big I was making my letters. Right. There we go. 
Okay. Okay. So, so that that's how I did the Hamsa. Um, that I'm I'm not thinking that <laughs> I'm going to do the coloring on this one. Um, but in the workshop, we get into the coloring because it's you know it takes a while. But there is. Let me show you a couple of things. Um, I was just, just going to say, can you show me what you do to color? What what do you use? Oh yeah, okay. So I'm going to show you um, what what I do, and also I'm going to map out this. And then you can look at the picture and um, you can see in the picture, once I have that mapped out for you, you know, the colors and, and, and the different um, patterns that I used. And you can choose other patterns too, but uh, you know, I'll show you that. So this is a um, upside down. This is Uniball Signo. This is my favorite gold, and it's not that expensive. Uniball Signo. You want the Signo. And I like the thicker, I like the thicker um, point and the thinner. It flows better. But you have to, you know, I have to control a little bit in narrow spaces. So, you know, but I would come in and you can just see it just let me see. Oh nice. Right. It fills it all in. It just glides. I you know, I love it. So I did that. That's you know, and that also when you take your time and you do the aura of this, which this was, here's the finished one. It covers up a lot of, you know. A lot of your little mistakes, right? It covers up those yeah, little mistakes. Yeah, cover it up. So, that, so that's really, you know, we're embellishing. Um, in this area here, I want to show you that in these in this area, I come in and I, I ink it in. If I have enough room and I do, I, I may put another aura here. Yeah, I think it helps create a little bit more depth. It finishes it. Finishes it off, yeah. So how do you get the shading? Like the gold and the other one is, is like, darker and then lighter like how how does that like okay so let me um i just <laughs> i just have to ask i have to know no i no it's a, it's a good question i just want to make sure i'm pulling the right stuff okay so the first thing is and i'm stop shaking i even i even like the shading that you have in the orbs because it kind of gives them a roundish look it looks like they're round like there's a shading to it it's very neat how it's not completely filled in aha right right i'm leaving gotcha. okay and if you want to get super um so, you know, shading can take as long as drawing a picture, right? Right, yeah. It could be in shading forever, you know. But, and here we go. You can, um, you know, so I could add, this is a Jelly Roll 10. It's getting empty, but it's Sakura. And it's the only one that I use of um these white jelly rolls i don't like the eight any of the smaller ones they just don't flow but the 10 is okay um so that that's how i would do these now the other thing is these have a oh, sorry about that come on there we go are you watching? Everything's falling apart. I'm looking. Um, 
These have um, different, um, there's a couple of different colors that make the shading. And I'm not sure I have them, um, them at my disposal at the moment. This is a okay. white pencil. I grab but, a white pencil. But um, yeah, so so I that that I can you know get into in the in the longer class, right? Um, so but, you, you're using the pens and then the colored pencils, right? And I also so I use this is great for anybody that's near Sam's, um, Prismacolor Premium. Mm -hmm. Now you can buy, uh, I think it's 35 in the set for $20. That's a really good price mm -hmm. of Prismacolor. Prismacolor pencils are really a great pro pencil. And they're and for $20 and 35, 35 colors, you can get in pretty inexpensively to, you know, pro pencils. Um they're creamy they're smooth did you see you know it's so creamy and smooth um there there are many others and um but i did i i wanted to mention that um what else okay so if you look at i did this you could do this in a circular pattern too you know if you had a circular shape you can make a hamsa you can also use this pattern to make the Hamsa this way, <laughs> you know, facing up. So you choose whether you do it up or down. But see here, I basically, because this was a square, well, I saw this as, this is facing down. So I saw this as, the as sun facing down, energy, light coming down. And then this um, curved at the bottom. So I went in with, I would go in with the pencil first, depending on how much space you have left here and create. Create a, you know, not perfect. And then on the other side, there. And then you can, if you want to have a couple of different patterns. And when you do this and you look at, at your, um, at your handout, on the front, you know, the picture, you you can see, you know, look at it carefully. There's an gotcha. or there's, you know, this is a little spiral. This is a pattern, but this could be as easy as making a little aura. I'm doing this fast, so uh, and it's in pencil, but you could do this. You didn't have to do what I did. And then you can come here. You can do it on the other side. Okay. You mm -hmm. can, you can um, blacken these in. It's really cool if you do that. And then um, I'm using um, color here, but if I wasn't using color, I can take this and come on the inside and do a little bit of a line on the inside. And then take the blending stump and I'm going to turn this a little bit. And I'm going to just, I'm going to move that graphite towards the center, but 
we don't make it to the center. We want um, light down the center. Otherwise, it won't do it, but it will start. Can you see how it's going to start to shade it? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And it kind of makes it curved. It's curving it. It's, like concave, I was thinking. Yeah, like it, 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 it's giving it a three yeah. three dimensionality. Um, I I love three dimension. I was I did sculpting, um, play for kids for years. Um, but if I wanted to, I could also take a white pencil and come down the. Um, so here's a charcoal general's charcoal white mm -hmm. and i can come down the center and give it oh it, it polishes it up some it, it polish, this is not polished mm -hmm. folks this right quick demonstration but you know i go back in and I, you know and i work you know define this line yeah but i don't want to really mess it up too much. My uh, my my twenty year old over here is working on her uh, five hundred word essay, and she's got zero words so far. Because she's watching. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> this, kids love uh, kids love to do this. So she she loves drawing. She's got pencils. She's got when you mentioned the uh, smudger tool there. I think you know she was like oh oh because she's got she has that she's got she has a bunch of things so. Two questions that were put in the um chat is I, I realized I should have been writing down or typing in the chat the types of pencils and, and points you were using. But um Ruby asked, how do you color the eye? And then Sylvia asked, are your pens and pencils listed in the PDF file? Because some I, of the brains that you had were I what I have in there is I have the uh, I do have uh Sakura, uh Sakura pens um but I can can I um send a um a list sure. or, yeah I I wrote in there the Prismacolor pencils at Sam's Club um though you know what I'm going to do is I put it in here before but I'm going to copy and paste the links that you had before that had a YouTube channel Newsletter on Substack, um, connect with the website, the February 3rd Hamza workshop that you have, and YouTube. Um, your YouTube channel get a lot. I didn't hear you. Yeah, the YouTube channel, <clears throat> which I will be putting up new. I have like 70 videos up there right now. Um, I did through Inktober, there's probably, what is there? There's 62 patterns that I demonstrate on my YouTube channel, but now I'm getting into be strictly beginner tangles on uh, the channel. But what I can, what we can do is when you put it up on YouTube, if I send you a link of um, the supplies, you could, um, Put it in the description. Yep. Right. Yes. So I can send you a description that has links in it if um, that would help. Right. Can you, um, I, I don't know if you want the time to color the eye, but just to answer Ruby's question, can you zoom in on the eye over there? So, because I, I noticed that there's like a little bit of a pattern of some sort on well, that. And I was thinking, yeah. like looking and seeing what that eye looked like. I'm looking. Did I put a pattern? Well, no, I mean, it It looks like there's a blue, the, there's blue and there's some white or something. It looks like there's some, some. That, it, it, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> it looks, it looks like my eye would be like, you know, it has those little flecks of all those different colors all in right. it. So. It does, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Now, the other thing that you can use is, um, and the, I'm getting more into, hold on a second, I'm bending backwards. <laughs> Careful, that's dangerous. I did that over here once and fell into the wall. Oh, and I don't, and I, I'm having, I have a back issue, so I don't want to be getting that to uh, 
Nor okay, so Prismacolor watercolor pencils. Uh -huh. So you can, um, and now what I'm doing a lot too is, is I would be putting this background in and then coming in with, with a little brush and um, make it watercolor. I was just going to ask, I was wondering if any of that was done with the water, the, like the little bit of water that like. Mm, no, but you need a different a kind of pencil. And I didn't realize that you know, as I was, as I was learning about all the different tools and stuff over the past couple of years, I thought that I had, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that the, the Prismacolor has watercolor pencils. These are the watercolor pencils. Right. And these are the colored pencils. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, um, color it as as you um as the spirit moves you <laughs> right and, and 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 what you have at home because you don't necessarily want to go out and get um you know a whole uh, a whole lot of different don't want to get a whole a, a whole lot of different supplies just from one drawing you know right Yes, very true. All right, so those of you that have been doing this, um, Let's while she's been that. doing this, would you like to turn on your screen and show us what you got? Brenda, I guess you want to go first? Oh, can we? Wait. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Very nice. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Just having fun. Yeah. It, yeah. I, <laughs> well, it's bringing up for me some Native American. Okay. You know, feel to it. All right. Hold on. And we got Tammy. Let me, let me get, let me, all right. Tammy, let me spotlight you real quick so everybody can see. Oh, look. Oh, she's, and you have, are those your kids' names? <laughs> it's my husband and my kids. Oh, uh, cool. That's yeah, my family. Thank you. This is so fun. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad. Very cool. All right. Let me go back to, let me move the spotlight. Let me go back to who else? All right, Elaine, let's look at yours. Hold on, Elaine. We'll look at yours quick. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice. Very uniform. I love it. Very nice. Oh, look, and you did the little fingers, the bless at the bottom and the thrive at the bottom. Yes, love that. A little flare. Very cool. All right, let me see. Marjorie has hers. Uh, like, oh, very nice. I didn't very, get too far, but. Very good, though. But you have Thank a good you. foundation there. Well, you have the whole um, design there. It was fun. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Anybody Who else? else? Anybody else? I'm a, there's two pages of people, so I'm going to make sure I've got... If you want to show us, if you've been working on it and you want to show us... Um, we want to see. Yep. Put your... Uh, put your video on and go ahead and hold it up. Otherwise, very good. Well, very cool. Very cool. Thank you for those of you that share. Oh, yeah, wait, we have a raised hand. Okay. Let's see. Spotlight for everyone. No, wait, let me see that again. Never, was that never? Never, never give up. Yep. Nice. Yep. All right. That, All right. Good thanks. job. All right. Thanks for the class. Wonderful. Yeah. Good job thanks. Now. Good to see you. Yep, you too. <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody else want to share what they've got? Aaron, I would just check one more time. I don't know if Mel, uh, let's see. Uh, let me do one more of. Everybody else on the second page. 
Um, Annie. Oh, Annie. Okay, let's get you, Annie. All right. Spotlight. Very nice. Thank I like you. the. It's been lovely. Thank you. I appreciate it. I like the double triangle. I was gonna say I like the double triangle. That's very cool. Yeah. And let's remove the spotlight from Annie. Anyone else? Very cool. All right. Do you have time? That, do you have any questions? Is there, I, I don't know if there's any That's questions. That's what I was going to ask if anybody had any questions and if they had any insights from what they learned about the Hamsa. And I did want to mention that it's, the the h has a has a um a bit of a so hamsa so it's yeah. a, yes uh, karen holstein said thank you oh here we got brenda hold on a second brenda oh very is that did you just do that no, I found this at a garage sale. Oh, I was going to be like, I don't need to just do that while we were doing this. I have no idea what the paper is, but it's very, very thin. Yeah. And I wanted to share that before we ended the class, because I think this is kind of old. It, no. it, it, it's really, it, it's interesting. I don't, you know, it's not, Um, I don't yeah, I, I like that. it. I, I like it a lot, and I love the design. I like yeah. that it's the outstretched hand, which yeah. maybe maybe it was a um, a healer or somebody. Yeah, I I get that sense. I immediately put it in a frame because I was so afraid the paper. It's like right. Oh yeah, paper, um, and it's very uh -huh. very thin. So it just feels like a. a Africa culture or somewhere, you know. So Marjorie says she wears a Hamsa on a red cord for protection. Yes. Yeah, it's supposed to be the hand of God. Mm hmm All right. I mean it go ahead, show it one more time as far as fine. Ah, I yeah. see. Okay. There's this it's, right. Okay. okay. It's not. It's not relig. It's not technically religious. It's not holy. It's just you can buy them for twelve, twelve for five dollars on Oriental Trading Catalog or Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> but it well, can I hurt. <laughs> right. And as I mentioned, it really isn't a religious symbol. Right. I think it's something shared by many cultures. I, I think you explained that very nicely. Yes, I find it interesting. It's shared by quite a few different. It's kind of interesting how they've, it's all been done that way. Uh, Ruby said, it looks like uh, Mendy. Uh, but everybody, thank you for a great workshop. Colette said, thanks so much. Uh, Annie, Annie said, Thank you so much from early morning Australia. So six, seven thirty. It should be seven thirty over there. Um, Karen Holstein said thank you. Tammy said thank you. Uh, Carla said thank you. So Yahudit, thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. This was wonderful. It's got me nice and peaceful. I have to go to the grocery store now, but I feel like I need to just go take a relax i need to go breathe and relax for a few minutes good so <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't think i should drive yet <laughs> I've, 